don't hate Mother's Day. Just if it's about me, leave me the fuck alone. Like, then make it about me. Don't say it's about me and then make it about you. What the hell are you eating? <laughs> and, and does it have sugar? And can I have five of them? <gasps> Turkey. Does not have sugar. Yeah, yeah. It's ham and cheese. On a and roll. A that's tiny your sugar. Roll, a tiny roll. But that's your sugar. That's the sugar I can't have. That's everything. I can have it. Yes, I'm very proud of you that you can have it. Mm. All right, let's get this shit started. I mean, I've only made started. a few small changes since I saw you, like the water and stuff, and I've lost four pounds. You mean drinking half your weight in water? I mean, nowhere close to that. It's been I've been drinking like 40 ounces at the most. I'm supposed to be drinking like 90. Okay. What's stopping you? Well, can well, we... Are we starting this? Are what's we get- stopping me? My The size of my stomach, perhaps? <laughs> Who the hell can fit 90 ounces of water in there? I mean, I know it's not supposed to go in there all at once, but like... I've been drinking ridiculous amounts of water. It's hard to fit it in. That's a lot of water. You know how many bottles of water that in? How many bottles... That is like five bottles of water. But it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of, for me, the weight loss aspect. It's that you get good skin, you get good, like it, it's supposed to just cleanse your kidney. Like there are a thousand health reasons for slash, slash skin reasons, slash beauty. It's not that I don't want the water. It's that I, I can't drink, it's hard, I can. It's very difficult for me to drink this much of it. My nana used to say, I can't drink water. Can I have juice? I'm like, no, that's sugar. Just drink the water drink the water yeah as opposed to mexico where you're not supposed to drink the water no right this is the opposite of mexico drink extra water do 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 you want to sing our song do do can you recognize that we should play a game where i whistle a song and then you we see if you can recognize it sorry you don't think you'd be (laughs) that's not a good idea Nah. Is that because I'm not a good whistler? Or? No. Do you remember being in the D-Sharps and they gave the Paul Simon or Simon and Garfunkel solo, me and Julio, to the girl who could whistle the whistle solo, not even thinking that someone could sing it and somebody else could just do the whistle solo? You guys were so smart. <laughs> you were so smart back then. But Sarah could whistle like it was nobody's business and she got that ba da da ba da 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 ba ba da 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 she got the me and Julio song and you all got to back her up. <laughs> bum, bum. Yeah. So yes, I was often too stoned to audition for things. Is that a fact? Is that true? I would forget about rehearsal a lot. <laughs> so yeah. Wow. It was true. Did you also do sorority stuff or? Yes. Okay, so I was also too stoned to remember about that too, usually. But yes, I think Crick kind of got thrown out of her sorority or depledged or something because the D Sharps took up all of her time or something like that. She had to remember that she had to pick one, but you were constantly getting kicked out of both. (laughs) No, I I didn't get kicked out of either. I was just juggling a lot. Whereas Dina said, "Nigs, not in good standing." Yeah, nigs. Very appropriate. Yeah, she's she's a classy one. I love her. I don't think we thought of it then that it would be racially inappropriate. Do you think that's what's going to do it? So glad John is not here. Hey, listener, we don't have John with us today. <sighs> he would kill me. He would kill you. If he saw you eating your ham and cheese sandwich and not talking into your microphone, that might just send him over the edge. To be honest, I didn't think we had started yet. Oh, we are started. And uh, that sandwich does look good. So, Jess, I'm over two weeks on my not eating sugar. And yesterday was Mother's Day. So knowing... Wait a minute. Yeah. I was totally going to ask you, this has got to be the whole episode because I want to hear about... I saw a lovely picture of you with Sharon yesterday on the... Yeah. uh, Instagram, on the Twitter, on the Facebook. Somewhere I saw it. And I thought... Wow, Melissa looks like she's having an amazing time, and her mother looks like she's sitting on a thumbtack. Bed, bed of nails. We like to say bed of nails. Yeah. Is that true? No, we were having a lovely time. She's not a smiler. You know people who just don't, <laughs> who just don't smile. 
<laughs> those, those who happiness does not affect, you know, they're just those. She's who, not a smiler. <laughs> she's not. She's not in pictures. In pictures. My mom's she's, not a smiler. No, now I'm. <laughs> she's not a smiler with air quotes. She doesn't feel joy. <laughs> <laughs> she Air feels quotes. she doesn't have a good heart. <laughs> <laughs> she feels joy and and her heart is not ice um but she just for pictures not so much. We have a last la- Is she afraid that she'll look um unsophisticated? I'm not quite sure the background behind it, but even for our Bene Mitzvah pictures a year and a half ago, closing in on mm-hmm. 2 years it was always deadpan face, and the photographer would say, "Best smiles, come on, everybody, show me your best smiles." And I would, un- through my smile teeth, say, "Ma, he's talking to you. Show us her teeth. Show us her teeth." She couldn't do it. Ah, uh, it's not her. It's not her happy face. It's just not her happy face. Does she does she have a happy face? Yeah, I think you saw it in that picture. She was pretty happy. I was in Florida with my kids, and. And there was her deadpan face. Yeah. Did you just get back from Florida tonight? Last night? No, that was that's an old picture. That's not current. That's from last Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, last thing this past Thanksgiving we were there, and that's what that picture is from. Remember the country club um, Thanksgiving? Yes, yes, that's what that is. Yeah. And sadly, one of the people at our table has passed away this past week. Um, so my mother is has now a reason not to smile, but or show teeth. But she. I was uh, wondering why he looks so tan out of nowhere. Yeah, I was down there for a few days, and then we spent our last couple with them for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. But this year, Mother's Day yesterday, we went out for breakfast, and yep. what did I get for th- for Mother's Day? I got a toaster. Yeah, I I love it, and I wanted a toaster. I really wanted a toaster oven because I haven't had a toaster like oven. Not for Mother's Day though. Yeah, I don't care. I I got a hair dryer. I got a yeah. I don't care. Mother's Day to me is not that big of a deal. If Stuart's not my child, if my kids could not be douchebags for six out of the twenty four hours, I would be so happy. But they couldn't. No, they did it. They did it. They so <laughs> the the day was this. We woke up. Happy Mother's Day. Um, and we went out for breakfast. So I had my typical eggs, everything I can eat. I don't think I need to go through the whole menu. But you know that Stuart is a. I need activity. I need activity. And I am his polar opposite. I need to be left the fuck alone. So on Mother's Day, when all I want to do is be left alone, he said, okay, the kids and I came up with this activity and this activity. And I said, whose day is this supposed to be? Yeah. Because if it's my... Fuck off, Captain. Yes. Captain Annoying Pants. Because <laughs> if it's my day, I, I'm good. Like, look away. Leave me alone in my night pants all day or no pants all day. Just look away from me. So Ethan played his game. Mallory watched some Netflix. I don't know what Stuart did. I think he caught up on a Hulu show he was watching. And then he got itchy. Like, wait, where's our activity? What's happening? I need activity. So I picked a movie and I made my children watch Poltergeist with me. da 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 Mallory hid for half of it. And I thought, is this even going to stand up to what I remember being like the best scary movie of my age? And, Would it be? Was uh, it? I don't know that it could really. Um, the I don't even remember what movie scared me. I'm never scared by those stupid ass movies. Are you serious? No, I do. Yes. I'm never scared by them. I'm always more irritated than scared because it's not scary to me. Because it's all. This is where the Asperger's comes in. Go ahead. It's all. Outside of the realm of believability for me. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but you don't think the combination of the music, it's really just the music for me. If I watched any of those creepy AF shows on mute, they would mean nothing to me. But the music and the kind of effects, I think the reason Poltergeist didn't completely stand up or or is because, like, you know, they had a strobe light for effect. A strobe light? Like what? <laughs> a strobe light may cause a seizure, but it's not going to make me be scared. But the music nowadays yeah. in those shows are so, oh my God, they really creep me out. It's the music. There were two movies that I found to be the scariest movies of all time for me. One was Carrie. Yeah. And that's because I was bullied. Actually, it was her mother that scared me more than having pig's blood dropped on her. 
uh, her mother frightened the shit out of me. Actually, both these movies have to do with obsessive Christianity. Carrie was the first one, and the second one was Agnes of God. Oh, yeah, I remember that. We did that in school, didn't we? Wasn't that one of the plays we did in no. school? No. Hell no. Agnes of God with the stigmata? Yeah. No. We oh, my God. You did that in school? No. no way. No, no, maybe not. Oh, my God. It was so frightening. I mean, I remember I walked into my mom watching it, and I was like 10. I was like, what the hell is wrong with her? Oh, well, she believes in Jesus so much that she has holes in her hands. And I was like, what? What? Why would you do that? Oh, my God. It was it was horrifying. One second. And you don't feel that the music from that movie is part... I mean, besides I don't content. Remember, I don't even remember the music from that movie. Really? That's, yeah. that's what really creeps the shit out of me. That's what really throws me over the edge so, of terrified. Okay. So it's interesting that you say that because I... Did you guys... Did you ever um, look into watching... Requiem on Netflix. I did not. Okay, I need you to watch that, and here's why. Because the whole reason that Elsie got me into it was because she said the sounds and the music were so creepy that it was scaring the bejesus out of her. Like the it was the audio that was like pulling her into a point where it was like chilling her bones, like that. (laughs) This is when we miss John having drops. You, you do, I'm sure he'll make a few. You do your own drop for that. Who? Me? Yeah, it's it's the music that throws me. I can handle, visually, I can handle anything. Oh, except for that one time that Stuart and I flew to Florida right before his boards, and he was taking a dermatology board test something, and he just had pictures of oh. the... Oh, I don't even want to. Grossest visuals I've oh. ever seen. And I, I mean, you're not. I mean, the, the people are probably thinking you're showing me something. No, it's just my imagination. Yeah, it's the Running idea. away from me. Yeah. <laughs> it was just my imagination. Yeah. So my it was the worst pictures I've ever seen. We were stuck on a plane and there was somebody sitting on the other side of him who was clearly looking at these Hold pictures, on, too. Just... Hold on. You but totally I... just froze like this. Oh, did you take a picture of it? <laughs> I should have. I didn't have a chance. Damn girl. I'm sad. Damn girl. I know. Why use Skype if you're not going to use it to its fullest? <laughs> I know. So sad. we watched Poltergeist and we had a, a scary but fun time and everybody went back to their solo activities to do whatever it is they wanted to do and then we met up again okay. for dinner, which is really my happy place and it was a dinner I requested which was where? At um Anthony's and Oh yeah, but not Anthony's Cold Pizza. Stone. No, it's it's the and they're they're expanding it. They are going into two storefronts now, so they're making it twice the size. This amazing Italian restaurant in my town, mom and pop okay. place. It's so good. I think we've taken you there. I don't know why I think that, uh, but it was. I don't remember eating anywhere with you except P.F. Chang's and Bonefish. Well, that's a shame. That's a damn it doesn't shame. Doesn't mean we've not gone because I don't think we've only gone to dinner together twice. Right. right I'm right. just saying. That's all I remember. I remember those very clearly for different reasons. Bonefish. I was pregnant. And I could only eat all the butter and shrimp because <laughs> mm, I couldn't butter. eat any potatoes. Mm, I remember that very clearly. And then P.F. Chang's, I remember because your kids were there. And, and I was – Nate was there we too. Getting, I was getting to know – and Nate was – I didn't remember that. But I was – I remember being – um getting to know your kids and being – and and remembering how delightful they were for the first time. Delightful. Aw. They are delightful. Your children are delightful. That, Not to you but to others. That is sweet. But you know at an Italian restaurant, what do you desperately want to shove in your pie hole? Bread. Bread. Pasta. They make the best sauce. So I get some... Did you do what I said, though? I gave you advice about this. On Friday, when we saw each other, I said chicken parm. I got chicken piccata. Close enough. Yeah. How was it? It was delicious. Their food is so good. They pound that chicken within an inch of its life. They have a lot more patience (laughs) than I do. That is the best. Yeah, it was really good. You want it to be be a a chicken pancake, really, like a crepe almost. (laughs) (laughs) Like a a crepe. Thinner than a noodle, but around crepe. Yeah, it was was delicious. But across from me is Ethan, who got this massive bowl of, of pasta with some sort of I don't know, crab meat and Mallory next to me who got the breaded chicken parm and with a huge bowl of pasta. And I just wanted to bathe in it. At this moment, you're talking to me about it. And I honestly can visualize the bowl of pasta in my head and think, no way do I want to put that in my mouth. But I don't know if it's because I'm so tired of being fat or if it's because I don't want to feel that heavy. That's amazing that you feel that way. That's great. How do I get to feel that way? 
Well, first, I think you have to gain 100 pounds and already carry around 100 pounds of pasta around your middle. Think, then try and shove more in. I think that's easier. <laughs> I think gaining 100 pounds is easier than losing 11. All you have to do is drink Coke, about six Coca-Colas a day. Ooh. And what else? I mean, that's pretty much, oh, I know, and gummy bears at night, which I think you already have that part covered. Do you not? Do you have a drawer next to your bed? No. I mean, yes, Did but you? not of food. No. I, oh, my God. We're not allowed to eat upstairs. It's too easy to <gasps> can't eat upstairs. So, all right. So when I was a kid, one of the greatest joys in my childhood was visiting my grandma Pearl. Grandma Pearl, I don't remember my sister being there, so it must have just been a treat for me. Maybe I, I don't remember her being there. It was just me and Pearl. Maybe she wasn't born. I don't know. My sister had to have been born, though, because she's only two years younger than me, and I wouldn't remember something from two. But anyway, I would spend the night at Grandma Pearl's. She would let me stay up late enough to watch Johnny Carson. And <clears throat> after dinner, she would put on her house dress. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Or, or her nightgown, whatever. I would put on my jam jams. And um, she would make a giant plate, like a dinner plate of fruit, crackers, cheese, um, cheese yeah, yes. and, a, and a couple of slices of cheese. And then we would – mostly water crackers, which is probably why I'm so obsessed with them now. Oh, I love and them. And then we would carry it up to bed. She would lay it in the middle. She had this huge king bed. It was just her. And it was like ornate to the – I mean, it was like blue – I imagine it like Joan Crawford's bedroom, but that's probably because it's in my head, you know, but like ornate wallpaper with feathers and blue and gold. Like, I picture gold in the textured like wallpaper. The teal. Yeah. Yes. Gold and, teal and like and white furniture with gold trim. Love like, it. Yeah. Yep. So we would get in bed. I didn't understand a word of Janet Carson because I was too busy shoveling fruit into my face at like 10 o'clock p.m., which I was never allowed to stay up that late. So it was all a delight. When the fruit and the crackers, when we were done with them or when they were just done, the bedroom drawer night table would open and inside would be – now, remember when bulk – food first came to the grocery store? I don't know if your mom got in on this craze. In but barrels. Like, both my in- mother, Both my mother and my grandmother got in on it. And so – my grandmother would have like chocolate malt balls in a grocery bag. And my mother actually is the one that caught onto this before I did. Like <clears throat> once this came out, my mother used to carry um, a grocery bag in her night table. She used to call it bridge mix, which was chocolate covered peanuts, raisins, carob coated chip. And my uh, and when she got diabetes, she used to call it she called it bridge mix diabetes. <laughs> she, knew she, she knew she got it from bridge mix when she was younger. <laughs> I got a malt intolerance so, yeah. due to eating those Whoppers all day, every day. No way. Totally. So I love those Whoppers. Love they them. Do. Yeah, the Whoppers were in there too, the whole thing. So like there was more in the drawer though, like hard candies, lozenges, old pairs of reading glasses. Like when my – so this was like when she was probably like 60. When she was 90, she was moved out of her apartment, different re- bedroom. And my dad said – I mean she had had a stroke and she couldn't really take care of herself. She had to move into a home. My dad said when they cleaned her uh, apartment out, the drawer, the drawer. Yeah, your favorite Full drawer. of ants. Full of ants. Uh, which is the reason we don't eat upstairs in our house. Wow, of course it is because it wasn't a quick enough turnover. <laughs> it constantly had sugar in it. Well, that and pro- – well, and she did have diabetes and she probably didn't remember what the fuck was in there. Like I'm sure at the bottom of the drawer were hard candies from 1956 and like, you know, whoever knows what else. You but mean like the root beer barrels? Is that what you mean? The root beer barrels? Yeah. My, you know, when she got older and she was in the home, she had a, a wheelchair with a basket in front. Like I don't know how – oh, it was a behind. And she would forget that she had eaten and be like, I'm hungry. And so there'd be a, like fruit and she would walk around. Sm- I mean, bananas from like two days ago. Yeah, we'd be wheeling her around going, what is that garbage smell? Oh, oh wait. it's grandma. Oh, wait. Nana smells like that. Why is that? Because <laughs> she's a collector. Yeah, she's a collector. So the long and short of it is for a little while there, my drawer. So five below is a problem because they have a huge candy section. and Everything's a dollar. So for a little while there, I would get candy bars and gummies and all kinds of stuff and and shove it in. This is after I was pregnant and before Isaac could eat candy. 
So like, oh yeah, he would totally find it now and be like, "Ooh, candy for Isaac." He has found it now. When he was potty training, it was in there because we were doing M and M's, and that's why he now goes pee for candy. But we don't have any candy anymore. But when I was potty training him, he caught on very quickly that if he peed, he would get M and M's. So he would say, "I want M and M's." No, no candy now. I have to go potty. That's fine, but you're not getting any candy. No, I go pee for candy. Oh, baby. <laughs> I know. Oh, shithead. baby. So, um, yeah. So we had to get rid of the candy and just let him. Yeah, it was bad. But oh, I don't think everyone's kid holds their pee for ransom. Just my kid. But like, um, oh, so the bottom line is, yeah, when Isaac was too little, yeah, I had a drawer full of candy. And I know that my my mom, so my grandma Pearl has a sister, Evelyn. Her daughter, Sue Ellen, does it too. I know my cousin Sue Ellen has a drawer. For, I don't know if it's candy because she's a, she kind of looks like your mom. She's very skin thin and blonde and beautiful, and you know she's like very sophisticated looking Sue Ellen. She's a makeup artist, um, but um, yeah, I know it runs in the family because Sue Ellen and I didn't figure this out till way later that we both did it. Did she also have that experience with your grandmother? Did she also get those special nights where she got the- so Sue Ellen is my father's age, so maybe. But she, but if she did, it was probably because she was overplaying with her cousins. Like, okay, like she's my dad. She's my dad's age, and then she has an older brother, Shelley, who is going to be in our badass Jews collection because he is a stockbroker that rides Harley's. Oh wow, Shelley Piddleman! Not only is he a stockbroker that rides Harley's, but he also talks like those fifties movies where it's like, "Hey, how you doing? Nice to like." He kind of talks like Frank Sinatra in a movie. Well, you want to call him Don? Hey, Don, how you doing, Don? Like he was, like he was in. You know what I mean? Where does he live now? Boca, baby. Yeah, he's at Del Boca Vista. Is he the president of the? Uh, yeah, the Seinfeld Del Boca Vista. Love Actually, it. I know that the. Um, I know that the. Um, audience is not going to be able to appreciate this, but I'm going to try and find a picture just because I have to show you the the coolness that is my cousin Shelly and my and my cousin Sue Ellen. So I, I would keep something in my bedside when I was pregnant, but it was like crackers cause, to get me through the I don't want to vomit kind of stage. But mm-hmm. Mallory knows there's no food upstairs. Ethan, they both know there's no food upstairs. And Stuart can't eat upstairs, even though he bought this house because his mouth noises in my bed um, might have me kill him before morning. So you can't eat at all near me. He mm-hmm, can't, at mm-hmm. least. And now I've broken my children because e- Stuart will eat fruit and Ethan will turn to him and say, do you have to? Really, Dad? All of that noise? And he will like yell at him too. And then he looks at me and says, you did this to me. You did this. My children now won't let me eat. Where can I eat in peace? That so, is funny. But not That's upstairs amazing. is the moral of that story. And ants is the main reason. I mean, reason. ants is a good reason not to, without question. I, I've yet to have that problem, mostly because I tear through that shit like nobody's business. But I've also had to stop that habit, basically. Weight is the other reason. If you're making it so easy for you to eat, it's kind of like... Well, no, in general, it's, it's kind of like putting ice cream in a bowl and eating from the bowl or just taking the fucking pint with you anywhere you go and eating the whole pint. So easy not to stop. But if there's no more in your bowl, you'll stop eating. Or at least if you have to get up to get more, it's it's more of a deterrent. So this is more of a problem because uh, don't get mad. When I was pregnant, I was supposed to eat protein right before I fell asleep to keep my blood sugar intact. Um, and I was too pregnant to go downstairs. So we have a tiny little cube mini fridge in my in my bedroom. Okay. And you can put little bottles of water in there to hit your 90 mm-hmm. ounces of water. Also dessert. Also hummus. No. No. Also no, cheese No, not dip, anymore. Also <laughs> yogurt. Not anymore. And yogurt. Didn't I tell you last week how much sugar yogurt has? I was so mad for something. Oh, that- it's light. Light. I always do light yogurt. Everybody, you should do light yogurt. Still has 11 grams of sugar for something that tastes like such shit. You would think it would be better f- for you. What kind of lunatic doesn't eat light yogurt? What kind of, I mean, a skinny you lunatic. Let's, let's. I don't know anybody after – all right, I know one person after 45 who does not need to worry about what they eat. And as much as I love her, I hate her too. So, Who do you know that doesn't have to worry about what they eat? I don't know anyone. My friend Gina. She can eat anything she wants and she just burns. Really? It's just genetically. Some people are genetically blessed and some people are not. And and I don't mean to hate on her but because I do love her, but I, I feel some I feel some hate. I admit it. I feel some hate. It's not her fault. I seriously can't wait to find this picture and show it to you if I can find a good one. It's hilarious. Of though. your rat pack relative? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so... First, I want to show you Pearl, because this is quintessential Pearl. Yep, that's exactly as I pictured her, with her lipstick and her is hair it? set up after going to the beauty parlor. Um, just These so- are her two sisters. This is Su- The middle one is Sue Ellen's mother, and the one on the end is, is May, who I don't, we don't... Ladies, uh, the- or dear listeners, this is uh, just as you pictured yeah. on the couch that has plastic coating... So Mm -hmm, as to mm -hmm. preserve all furniture, (laughs) you can hear them sit, you can hear them stand up. Hey, just just to let you know, I'm pretty sure the word is lozenge and not lozenger. Did I say lozenger? Are you serious? Doesn't it sound like you did? (laughs) As you say it right now, doesn't it feel right to you? As I say it, it does. I do realize I did. Yes. All right. I'm on it with you. So after last night's dinner. Hold on. Hold on. Let's give it a minute. Yes, I do. Don't listen to it. You don't need that kind of stress. Yeah, so I might have to just. What are you even doing? Listening to it? I might have to pour acid on it and then throw it out. That might be what I have to do. I have to go find some acid. There's no reason for you to listen to that. I was hoping one of the kids would take it with them to school today for lunch, but they like to buy lunch, and also they like not to tell me when they have zero balance at school for buying lunch so that my kids used to do that too but I, that was very actually they would send me emails you shouldn't have that problem i get a phone call Did they not send you an email saying when they have down to like a dollar no only when they are beyond if when they're overdrawn one or more members of your family have a negative balance is the phone call i get mm. so i get really mad because it's embarrassing to feel like- oh my god i found the pictures we are. We might actually have to put it in our show notes because you spent all this time trying to find. I know. No, I think he does not look as rat packy. He looks more like Scandinavian rat packy. What about here? That's a little more. That's that's quite a name <laughs> too. He doesn't look like the rat pack now. He's like seventy five. Yeah, but I but called I'm saying one see. of my kids after that, or one Looking of my dogs. This is him in his Boca apartment. Yeah, it is. It's Century Village. Yeah, look at that. Uh, he's getting... Oh, he looks a little older. That's him with my cousin Aaron. Hold on. We You're might right. have to put a link to pictures. his Facebook page on our show notes, just so everybody could see. No, we don't. He looks a little older. There he is with his biker... Oh, his stomach's sticking out. Who put these on here? I would kill them if I could. Anyway. I told somebody about your eight Harley Davidson leather jackets the other night. I told this and? young kid, this high school kid, that, you know, if he wants to build a Harley and he wants to do this, then he should definitely let me know because I know eight jackets that are ready for eBay. Kidding. And I might get him a better deal. Knowing me gets you okay, something. S- this is <laughs> whose mother was the sister. This is my cousin. Look at her. Is she fantastic or what? What year is this that the hair is so hairy and the products and makeup are oh so my god it had to be like 84 85 86 exactly she doesn't look like that. that now she looks like uh this now um so jessica what did you do for mother's day all right you're trying to change the subject because i'm boring you i'm sorry you're not boring me you're just showing me pictures that don't make great pod i love your pictures but nobody else will so that's how i got fat was food in the drawer we were back to the pasta wait a minute so uh, let's go back for a second. Forget my mother's day. So after dinner, I mean, did you ever get left alone is the question. I did before the movie and a little bit after the movie, but not not to the point where it was a day about me. But that's fine because... Is there any world where in which you can just say, I know you want to do activities. How about if you do them on my behalf? Go to the grocery store, get the ingredients, make me a pie. <laughs> and this way you can give them like, you know, a job to do while you're resting is my is That my would have point. been a great idea, but I can't eat pie. Yes, that would have been a great idea you to give I them mean. an activity. A salad. Well, the weather was shitty because we were all supposed to grab oh, a dog and we were supposed to walk around the park that they built by us. And that would have been like a family talky, walky, doggy kind of activity, which I would have loved. I did get a comment. A, why don't you have a barbecue and invite over people that hate Mother's Day like yourself? Or is that too much work? I don't hate Mother's Day. Just if it's about me, leave me the fuck alone. Like, then make it about me. Don't say it's about me and then make it about you. <laughs> now I know what Stuart expects for Father's Day. So now I need to dance and give him activities. But I did get an hour here and an hour there alone. And then there was TV at night. We watched um, we watched things like Superstore. We got some feedback from our last podcast a little bit ragging on me for liking Dan Fogelberg. Also ragging on me about my yes. retirement activities of 
saying that I would go hiking, that that's... I mean, that is ridiculous, but me, whatever. Me going hiking? That was my idea. Yeah. Isn't it just walking but up? Yes. So, yes. So... It is walking but up. It's not that ridiculous, but like... I think people are probably imagining you backpacking, which is different than hiking. Well, that's ridiculous. Anybody who knows me would not picture that ever. <laughs> our, so true. Our friend um, Amy sent us a thing that said, wait a minute. The funniest part was the fact that Jess said hiking and you paused and paused and then said, is there a toilet? <laughs> so, so yeah, that that's funny. That's a no. <laughs> I have a friend who worked for the World Wildlife Federation and she would have to go all over the place and she spent quite a bit of time in a Latin America third world country. And then I saw her shortly after that for a camp reunion at summer camp and she had brought her own like Charmin ultra soft whatever and I was like, you know they have toilet paper here, right? And she goes, I will never, ever ever use bad toilet paper again in my life she's like life is too short to to use shitty toilet paper she's like i take it everywhere don't judge me (laughs) i was like fair enough stewart travels with it absolutely do it does he really he does he does i don't particularly like hotel toilet paper so maybe i'll take that advice um okay so my mother's day please that's what we're on to now okay well, first, about three days ago on two – no, this is now almost a week ago. Tuesday or Wednesday, I got a shipment from Calyx Flowers, which is my favorite. Oh, I saw those. C-A-L-Y-X Flowers. I saw those. They were gorgeous. They were rosalias, which I've never heard of, but they're – at first, I pulled them out and I thought they're wilting because they're roses, but they're crinkly on the tops. And then when he said they're rosalias, I realized they're just – they're like ribbons. On the top, like the way they they twirl around is ribbony, which is so cute and pretty. So, um, is that a hybrid? Is that a hybrid flower? Yeah, roses and azaleas. Okay, yes. And then, um, Saturday, he said, like, I was sitting here working, 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 working out of nowhere. He goes, Do you want your gift? And I was like, What gift? He was like, Your Mother's Day gift. And he was like, This way you can wear it tomorrow. And I'm like, Wear it? Sure. He got me a beautiful ankle bracelet with elephants. He said he wanted to try and find three elephants, but there's four, which is fine, whatever. Um, but it's very dainty. I asked him for dainty anklets. So I have one. He said there's a few more coming. So they must have not all been able to get here by Sunday. Um, it's really cute. I uh, Let me see. I don't know if I can show it to you. Let's see. I love elephants. Can't get enough of them. I just see your toes. Oh, look how pretty. Silver. That is very yeah, delicate. I love it. It's very delicate. That was so awkward. Woo! That was like acrobatic and shit. That was exercise. Um, it was a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have a yeah dainty little um, anklet, which I love. And then Isaac, who, by the way, is the laziest artist by far in his classroom. Like he will draw a circle on a piece of paper and be like, I drew it for you, mommy. I'm going to go play. It's the worst. So. Um, he presented me with a picture. I opened it expecting to see like a dot on the page. Yeah. But no, it's like a full glitter paint with purple and blue. It was very pretty. And also he painted a little birdhouse, like a, an ornament birdhouse with teal and purple. And it's like, I'm like, oh my God, someone made him actually do a good job. Yeah. I'm amazed. Yeah. It's Mother's Day. Hooray. You can't call, you can't phone in that circle anymore, buddy. I need you to sit down here. Yeah. And- the teachers were like, sit the fuck down, Isaac. You motherfucker. My favorite is when the teachers, <laughs> when they're that little, used to say, my home is, and they used to make him, they used to make the kids say something, you know, whatever was meaningful to them, but then they would write it out. So it's their, it's your kids' words, but a grown up wrote it out and then they drew their picture. So you knew, so if your kid were able to express themselves in any logical way um you would have seen it but since they can't they do it for them and those were the cutest mother's day gifts yes i mean yes that's true i mean i have so i even have some they probably gave him a lot of was always the best at this emily was always first of all even as a small small child she always drew in great detail so like it was never just a house and a dog like the dog had a collar and the collar had a name and like you know she always did this and then she would always write like these in like um, I love you because you are pretty and have curly hair and you're smart. You know, she would always like do a whole poem for Mother's Day. And then as she got older and it was my money, of course, she would really spoil me. <laughs> like like she would like 
you know, like Scott would take her and she would pick things out. Meanwhile, Nathan, same thing. It's a circle with his, with Nate at the bottom. Oh, still to he this day. He did call me yesterday. He called me yesterday. They, he couldn't come because they were at the beach. But <clears throat> he did call me yesterday to say Happy Mother's Day. Um, yeah, so it was pretty. Okay, so what did we do? So we Laura wanted to take Meryl out to – well, first of all, I was offered to go to my father's and see my stepsisters, who I love dearly. And I was very close to taking them up on this offer. And I've been talking about it for two weeks, talking about it for two weeks. Finally, Laura was like, I want to make a reservation for my mom. Are you going to be here Mother's Day? And I said, no. And then immediately I felt guilt and wrongness. So I called her back and I was like, cancel that. I'm going to go. I have to go. She was like, why? No, you don't have to go. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't have to go for you. I said, but I, my stepsisters and my father, as much as I love them, like you and Mara are the mothers that help support me the most. So I want to spend Mother's Day with you guys. Like I can see them another time. I'll have to see them another time. Father's Day maybe. But – She's like, oh, that's so nice. Okay, great. So we went to this place called La Fia, which is like a French – it looks like a farmhouse on the inside, but it's like right on Market Street in Wilmington. They had a brunch and like – okay, so here's the thing. So like I woke up with Isaac. That was like from 7 to 8 and then Scott took him downstairs and let me sleep till like 10.30. When I woke up, he made me breakfast. He made me like roasted red potato, home fries and like four pieces of bacon and like two eggs. Um, it was a big breakfast. Uh, I didn't, you know, it was a little bit of potatoes, mostly protein, which I wanted. Um, Sounds I delicious. ate some of it, of course. It was really delicious. You know, he's the best cook ever. Yeah. Then I kibitzed. Then I went upstairs to get dressed. Then I went to the brunch. On the brunch menu, there was like steak and eggs, huevos rancheros. Nothing I wanted because he just made me this breakfast. Right. So it was like stuffed with potatoes that I had just eaten or stuffed with bacon that I had just eaten or stuffed with eggs that I had just eaten or a Belgian waffle, which I definitely didn't want. Ugh. So I ended up getting – they had an appetizer that was deviled eggs. So I thought, okay, I'll go there. But the inside of the deviled eggs was so salty. It was like inedible. I don't know why. They had bacon. had bacon mustard. It was good except for that. Um, and I didn't know what else to get. Like they had crabbed it for the table and like that was really good. And I was kind of full, but it was, seems like it was a waste of a brunch. So then I was like, fine, I'll get avocado toast. Ooh, that sounds great. Except for the toast. Um, they were crostini. So it wasn't that bad. Okay, good. But, um, th- three skinny ones. I ate one and I was like, I can't eat anymore. I'm stuffed. And I took the rest home. So, I mean, it was nice though. The avocado was good and it had like some lemon and like some, it was good. It was pretty good. We didn't have dessert because it's breakfast. That's um, why you don't have dessert with breakfast. It was at two. Oh, that's the other thing. Our brunch wasn't until quarter of two. Oh, we couldn't get a reservation until quarter of two. So, like, it wasn't really breakfast. It was like dinner, late lunch. Yeah, yeah, it was dinner. So, um, then we went to the grocery store to pick up stuff for dinner because by the time we got home, it's going to be four or five, and Isaac and Scott will be hungry for dinner. So we went to the grocery, got deli meat, and then around six o'clock, ate sandwiches. And Laura was there and Meryl was there and Izzy was there. And it was nice. I mean, we just were hanging out. They hung out with Isaac a little bit. He was really, really rambunctious because he hadn't had a nap and he never naps at this point. And he was up at six, though, which is really early for him. So by five o'clock, like, uh, unlike, you know, I love the pictures like online of like kids that are drunk and falling into their oatmeal. Like, I wish that was my kid. But instead, the opposite happens. He gets all riled up and rammy. He gets really riled up and rammy. He starts running, yelling, l- like chasing, being chased, pulling his pants down, sticking shit in his ears, like the whole thing. So no more, no yeah. more stuff in his ears, right? Not since then. It's terrible. And then it may, and then you have to yell because it's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know? And then he cries. You know, as not, it, yeah, it Mallory was, cries when I yell at her too. You know, the secret is to speak softer and softer and softer instead of yelling, right? As a teacher, when your class is so loud, you start speaking also, softer, so they have to oh, be quiet different. to hear you. Yes. It doesn't work on a kid who's like the Tasmanian devil at that moment, though. And also, um, I have even tried like saying, I'm going to spank your tushy. And then I would go to spank his tushy, and he goes, ha, ha, ha. He, like, this is hilarious. It doesn't even work. You have a second shot at it. I think I made a mistake never hitting my kids. I think I made a mistake. They don't. You think fe- you made that mistake? Yeah, never hitting them. Um, so there is no fear to respect with us. There's just, you know, that bitch not going to hit me. I could do whatever I want. Like, there's no fear. I would like a little bit of fear until you're 25 and your brain's done developing. Let me 
help you make a couple of decisions. Let me help you because you are not capable. It's not your fault, but you're not capable of knowing what's next after you make a decision. Like you just don't think what's next. It's not your, it's really, it's not their fault. So if I had just, I mean, hit them. It was very rare, but I did when, I mean, when they were just with Nate, especially because he, sometimes he needed it just to get his senses together. He was so hysterical that like turning him over and giving him a good smack was the only thing that would make him like get a hold of himself, Focus. which is weird. Rain it in. Yeah. Focus, boy. Yeah, I, w- I could never have um, With them. Emily, it, it never went well with Emily. She would always look at me like if she could kill me with her eyes, she would like she would look at me with like hatred and disgust. If I ever and I mean, I didn't really I very rarely needed to do that with Emily, if at all. But, it, you know, and it certainly wasn't like, well, you lied to me. Let me get the belt. It was never like that. Yeah, Pick your switch. Which one do you want? We've never. It was always like fear. It was always in the moment. And it was usually something like her trying to walk away and me grabbing her back or something like that. Like it was never like, let me hit you. Bend over, bitch. Like it was over never like my that. Knees. I think Stuart gave a thump in just once when I don't know if it was Ethan or Mallory. They ran out into like a parking lot traffic. And I think it scared him so much. I think out of fear, he just gave him like one pop on the keister and that was that. And that was the only time he has ever raised a hand and it touched the kids like that. And I never did because I'm just not a hitter. Like that's not, if I can reason my way out of something, words are my, are my fists for the most part. And yeah, verbal ninja skills. (sighs) But how many times did you patiently say, come here, let's get your pajamas on before, like what happens when you're done being patient? I let them sleep looking homeless. Like I, I, I don't, there are certain things that I care about and there are certain things I don't. You want to sleep in that dress and whatever, or Ethan. <laughs> he wasn't running because he didn't want the pajamas. He's running to torture me. Yes, he is. And you're letting him torture you. You're showing him that you're, that he's torturing you. If he didn't think he was torturing so you. So the he, answer is just say, never mind. No, it's to walk away. Just I wouldn't say anything. I would walk away. He's now not in his pajamas. Would it kill him if he slept in your in his little tiny no, shorts and a t-shirt? Not. So guess what? No. Wherever you land, <laughs> whenever that that windy thing in your back runs out and you drop to the ground because there's zero energy left, All right, that's where. Enough. Yeah, I mean it's choose your issues. For me, it's you know, right now, what are my issues? I would like them to get more sleep. That's my issue because I think that more sleep makes you healthier, smarter, all that stuff. So whatever you're doing during the day, I'm not on you to study for your keystones this week and your APs next week. And your, you are managing your time. You got this. These are your grades. Could you mm-hmm. please go the fuck to sleep? That's really, you remember that book for kids called Go the Fuck to Sleep? Yes, I have it. Yeah. Yes. So I, I love Narrated that. Narrated by Samuel L. Jackson. Yep. I love that. I, it's, my, it's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Go the fuck to sleep and stop I think after seven, they realize that bedtime is their one good shot to totally manipulate you. So, mommy, I just want to tell you, I just want, you're so, I wish that all this conversation, I want to talk. Oh, yeah, I get that now. Do you? Yeah. Three. Wow, that's early to not let you go to bed or not to fight bedtime. No, he will literally leave the bathroom from taking a leak, say goodnight to his father, get in bed and say, I have to go potty. And I know what the way he says it, he doesn't have to go because he's, it's a part wine, part, let me see how this works. I have to go potty, like a little song. He's manipulating you. Yeah. And it's wonderful. It is. It's because, and we don't, you don't. And we want that time. We want that because it's a time where you're not chasing him around like a fucking maniac to put his pajamas on. It's a time where you're not saying, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're rocking the boat. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's the time where he's just sweet and warm and delicious and you mm. want it. So he knows that. So he's like, I got mommy. Watch this. Mama. Uh, fuck. <laughs> I got to go sit yep. with me. And for about 20 minutes, I put up with it. Mama, I don't want to go to school. Mama, I have to go potty. Isaac, you love school. Go to bed. Yeah. And yeah. I don't like ending my night with, I said, go the fuck to sleep. So now I'm angry as I'm crawling into bed. Why yeah. are you torturing me? The other, And then he'll go, I'm scared. No, you're not. There's nothing in here to be scared. I don't want to go to school. No, you're fine. You're going to be fine tomorrow. Just go to sleep. You made me watch Poltergeist. (laughs) My favorite animal is the elephant because they go, you know, like, and then it's like a whole story. I'm like, Isaac, 
<laughs> that's very nice. You know, and like for 20 minutes, I'm like, that's nice, honey. Oh, that's great. Okay, go to sleep now. Good night. And he'll go, okay. You ever fall um, asleep in his bed with him? You ever just fall asleep there because he's so exhausting? Uh, Yes, when he was younger. Not now. Now I don't for some reason. Um, But because that's normally – because he can't shut up. So there's no falling asleep. The second he closes his mouth, he's out because he's usually exhausted. It's just that he cannot shut up up by the end of the night for us i'll go into ethan's room and we will talk to his alexa and say alexa play jeopardy so we lay in bed and answer 12 questions to the best of our ability some of the things he he just did in school some of the things i pull out of my ass and he looks at me like i'm this new person like how how could you possibly know these questions yeah well son i know you've been here for 14 years i've been here a little longer so fuck off 30 more you prick (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) like this is not my first rodeo so we answer the questions we hear how well we did according to the national whatever and then it's a kiss goodnight and goodbye so if there's something he needs or wants or wants to fess up to be honest after 11 it's what do you have to admit that you shouldn't have done um it's between it's the Jeopardy time. So usually that's when I'm in the car with them, with Emily and Nate. I would have to drive them somewhere, and that's when I would get confessions, like a church. That was my theory. If I had gone for um, my PhD, I wanted to talk about therapy and how not sitting across from someone, it's much easier if you're both doing the same thing, like playing a yep. video game for kids or in a car. So carpool, it's very smart. Carpool therapy was my theory of, of there's no eyeball to eyeball pressure of, oh God, he's looking at me. She's looking at me. They can look out the window and pray for death. <laughs> Instead of looking you in the face. <laughs> There's just no pressure of it. It's it's an equalizing kind of kind yeah. of feeling. Um and that was what I was gonna write about. So anybody out there, if you're in grad school and you wanna steal my thesis thesis, run away with it and do better than Melissa I do. don't need it anymore. Well, yeah, yeah I guess not. I guess not. And that's no, I mean that's I that's when I try to get shit out of my kids when we're in the car. Yeah. But I know it's harder when they get older. Then you have to take their phones away if you even want them to answer you in the car. So or look at you at all ever. Yeah, yeah I know. I don't They're need to be looked dicks. at anymore. Kids are dicks. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, mom. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, mom. Did you get any feedback what? or comments about our last episode and all of the guilty pleasurey things? And because I have another guilty pleasure to add. In Jeopardy, baby. Our love's in Jeopardy. <laughs> Ooh, I know that's that's Weird Al Yankovic's version. I know. Um, I watched. Did you re- Did you listen to that as a kid, Weird Al? I loved him. I loved him. I loved him too. I still love so him much. because he does a Hamilton polka. So he takes the musical that our family is now obsessed Stop with, it. and he does a polka out of like a medley of songs from Hamilton the musical, and it is phenomenal. We love it. Um, but I that's ridiculous. I watch another TV show called Hollywood Darlings. Do you know anything about it? Mm-hmm. I have heard of it, but I don't remember. Hold on. I'm looking to see if we have any uh... feedback while you're looking. I will tell you that it's a scripted, mostly scripted TV show with three childhood stars, child actors. Oh, yes. Jody Sweeten, right? She is one of the three. Do you know the other two? Okay. No, but I remember Jody Sweeten very clearly. So Jody Sweeten from Full House and Fuller House now as well. Uh, Christine Layton, who's from Step by Step, which means she worked with Patrick Duffy. Oh yes, right. And Suzanne Summers Hold wasn't on. she in that too? Patrick Duffy and yes, Suzanne. and Beverly Mitchell from How Seventh Heaven. How old is that girl? Wait, she was the little one, Hollywood. Then Christine Layton. That was nineteen ninety one. That was almost twenty years ago. How old is this girl? She's in her. Th- 30s right so she was like 10 yeah she's in her 30s and they have kids and a couple of them are dating or not dating or but there's i want to see her as a kid so i can remember their stories i mean i like it they're super short it's it's like just a a bite of a i think they're supposed to say that it's a reality show but it's not it's a scripted accentuate it's just part of their lives is kind of what i'm trying to say it's just i can't tell which one is her in the in the step by step picture, they say it's an exaggerated version of themselves in their current lives, navigating the ups and downs of living in Hollywood and resurrecting their careers. 
Resurrecting. Which one is she? I don't have a picture in front of me. I never watched that show. Is that another confession? I never watched Step by Step. I never watched Seventh I Heaven, but I know who Beverly Mitchell is. And I did How watch did Full House. How did you not know? How did you not watch Step by Step? How did you come out of that unscathed? Like I, I didn't watch Family Matters. I didn't watch Step by Step. I think I got into video games at that point where TV was... Hey, I also have two older brothers, so it's not like I ever held the remote control. So it's not like I ever had That's control over point. what I watched in the first place. You got me there. And my two older brothers were not about to watch Seventh Heaven and Step by Step. Those are just not shows they ever would have seen. So Christine Lincoln was like the little one. She's a little one. Yeah, she, I totally don't recognize her from anything, but Beverly Mitchell's done some other things or like... Let me see. There, That's the third one? That is seventh heaven she's she's cute she's just that oh here she is beverly mitchell okay let's see they say they all do oh yeah i know her yeah yeah i remember her in that show for sure they say they all do i never even watched it hallmark channel movies that's yes right they do that's what they're that's all doing candace now. cameron burr yep yes yeah, so that's what they all do now but in addition to that they're looking for like their own series or whatever they can do to bring back i love it when somebody like beverly mitchell talks about how cheap she is like, you've got Hollywood money. Like, what? What are you doing returning? What do you mean how cheap she is? She told a story once about how she'll buy two shirts for her husband and return one about a sale price and, and going back to the store and rebuying. And and I thought, that makes absolutely no sense. If you buy a shirt, your husband's wearing it, and you return it to get it for a second one for a sale price. What are you talking about? You've still paid for... She's ridiculous, but... She's trying so hard to clip coupons. She re-gifts gifts from swag bags. She's got this like super cheap jean that I find impressive. It's like a sixth sense, a superhero power. But at one point, she talks about re-gifting a seminar to somebody that turned out to be that cult that was recently oh the um in L.A. that uh yeah with allison mack yes um, who was a friend of hers another childhood david something yes david something and it's got a un, it's got a nexium i think or that's exactly what it is nexium. Like is nexium yes. a drug no it's okay. it's that cult that's exactly what it is because they talk about it. and that was yeah. my favorite ep- i've been reading a lot about that because it's so creepy well they have a podcast Being too. branded they went right oh, they being branded. That's what it, that's what it got down Disgusting. to before somebody stepped Horrible. in and said, "This is really fucked up." I know, I know. That's what it has to come to these days. We're so right? desensitized. Let's just talk about that. Well, our society is so desensitized. You actually have to brand a woman before people will be like, "Wait, wait that ain't what's right." Going on here? Wait, what now? <laughs> Slow down. I get that you're <laughs> drinking and eating this and being told you're a piece of shit and shaving your head, but yeah. you put what on your body? Fuck that. But yeah, we'll be okay with it. Even the forced sex, but don't brand a bitch. Right, that's exactly. Not that's that's the point it came to where somebody's like, maybe we should look into that. So in a her friend Allison that's good material. Al- I gotta write that down. Allison Mack must have gotten seen her and want she was told and they're told they have to recruit. They were told they have to go out and bring in to this cult. And Allison went to Beverly Mitchell. She she's on a she has her own podcast with some other guy who I don't know. Um, when she said, oh, yeah, she gave me this card, this gift card for a, a weekend at this place for meditation, recruitment, and good fine eating, recruitment, anything they could do to suck them into this cult. And Beverly said, well, I really wasn't into it, so I gave it as a gift to someone else. So now she's giving away this this recruiting kind of weekend away to someone else, and she and it turned out to be this super sketchy cult that did wind up branding women, which is fucking crazy. Yeah. So they so they do this TV show that I think it's like on one of those channels like Pop or that has their own programming, but nothing's good. But it's my guilty pleasure the same way Dan Fogelberg is. So sorry, whoever posted on my... Why is it I don't remember you talking about Dan Fogelberg at all? Like, I know you've been teased about that this week, and I have no recollection Do you of you remember I said the lead- Where was I? Leader of... Uh, could still be a brain injury. The leader of the band, um, longer. Like, remember we were going over the songs that it's not nothing's ringing a bell. Wow, I could do no. anything to you, and you are not going to remember. This is like... This is why I'm really good at keeping secrets, because I don't remember <laughs> anything. <laughs> It's. I mean, like, I am ADHD enough where I am, like, the best person to confide a murder to because I'll be like, 
I don't know if she was a part. She might have told me. She might have not. I don't remember a I thing. I truly don't remember. Well, Jessica, we record shit, so you don't have to remember, right? Right, but then I have to, then you're saying I have to re-listen to no, it. No, don't do that, because I'm very upset right. when I re-listen. Yeah, oh, you don't like to either. Now you know why I don't re-listen. I hate re-listening to it. I always feel like I could have done something better, always. or I sound like a maniac, or I'm not paying attention enough, or something. Last week, I apologized. I don't know why anyone listens to me at all. Wait, I'm sorry, listeners. Keep listening. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's just kidding, dear listener. I'm <laughs> not really, but that's She's okay. just kidding, dear listener. Keep listening. Yeah, I'm not. I, I mean, I, very rarely do you want to hear yourself talk for two hours. Well, I, I listened last week. Remember, I re- apologized last week about how I used too much foul language and I went on a rant and I didn't like. No, of course, you don't remember that because you don't remember anything. No. In fact, <laughs> when you were like, I'm so horrified by my language. I'm like, did you use bad language? So last I week I remember. apologized. And it's because I listened. I'm not listening anymore. Look, don't do we're going to do That's the best we can for you. I'll bring you as what much as... What are you going to re-listen for so you can relive the pain? Do, uh, don't live in the past. Only live in the future. I'd love to live in the future, but somebody's making me live in the present. That's a family joke, actually, because one time I was at a family dinner with my... My father's the middle child. He has an older brother and a younger brother. And the older brother is like total Eddie Haskell. He's like a... I mean, not anymore because he's like 70, but like... Um, as a kid, he was mean and like, he's also the wealthiest and whatever. So, um, we were at a family dinner and I was like, man, I really meet, he had a beach house in Rehoboth that we used to go to twice a year as a kid. Love it. And so I was, we were talking about it and I looked over my uncle and he was part of the conversation. I'm like, I really miss that beach house. It was so much fun. I was like, do you ever miss it? And he goes, no, because I only look to the future. I never live in the past. And so now my dad and I... <laughs> My father was like, <laughs> my dad and I both looked at each other like this. That clown. What's that clown talking about? You know, yeah. Who so like this now, guy? whenever we talk about anything that happened in the past, he'll go, "I only live to the future. I never live in the past." <laughs> who brought this guy? What's going on with future? this guy? What an. I mean, just it's just a. This is also the same guy who, when I told him I was going to become a graphic designer, said, "Graphic designers are a dime a dozen. Can't tell them apart." Oh, I wish I could go to his Thanksgiving every year. I think you get lots of morsels from that guy. Oh, my God. He's a gem. So a peach. I was... He's a peach. A peach. I tell you. Um, I was watching I American Idol because... Again, you are? What do you mean again? It is actually a series. You can't, I can't say again. There's one singer it, on there because who... Because it just came back after years and years of not being there. And it's no... So that doesn't make it a series, does it? It makes it a... It's like a... It's like a VD that won't go away. It's like herpes. It's not like herpes. There's one singer on there who I love. It is very much like herpes. Who? Her name is Maddie. And she has, she's done, she's eye roll me. She's done like a Simon and Garfunkel song. She's done, she is the best by far. But there was somebody else on there that reminded me of somebody I used to date. And I reached out to him on, um, and when I say date, I don't mean date, but somebody I knew from high school. And he had sent a friend request a while ago and I never really look at friend requests. And then I accepted it and I said, Oh, look at this. There's a guy on American Idol who totally re- it looks like this guy totally reminded me of you. He's got long hair. He plays rock. He's totally reminded me of you. So he said, it's funny right. that you finally accepted or reached out or did whatever. And I heard a James Taylor song the other day and it totally reminded me of you. And I thought, Really? That's what reminded you of me? Really? So that was a total surprise to me. And I was wondering what mm-hmm. you think reminds other people of you. Holy shit. Uh, that is a tough question. <laughs> I <laughs> never mind. <laughs> have no idea what's in other people's heads. Yeah, I mean, this was a total Nor do shock. I remember. I know. Here's what the one time someone has told me. Uh, like, so I caught up with a college boyfriend like a couple years ago because of Facebook. Uh, Peaches, his name will be. And uh, I don't know if you ever met Peaches. No. Peaches was the guy I was dating when I went to New Orleans with you. Oh, really? Wait, you were not that that held me to any you kind of standard. You were dating someone when not. we were in New Orleans? Yes. Ugh. We were broken up, poor, kind of. Poor but Peaches. yeah. Not really. Sorry, he was, Peaches. He could care less. We were mostly friends. It was complicated. We weren't really in love. We were just. I, it was the kind of thing where we really liked each other, but we weren't really 
in love, but he was very cute. And I guess he was a, what, it doesn't matter. So anyway, so Peaches. So I catch up with Peaches uh, like a couple of years ago and he tells me in, we play words with friends. We actually still do every night, play words with friends. At one point in the conversation when we finally were able to text on words with friends and we said, hello, and how are you doing this and that? And he said, you know, I always thought you would be a writer. And I was like, what? Why? He goes, because you always did my English homework. And I was like, I did? Because, <laughs> of course, I don't remember. And I, I mean, I vaguely remember helping him with it because I, I remember he did an essay on baseball. He's a baseball player. So I was like, I guess we did that. And then he said, you know, I, this I do remember. I used to always try and feed him because I was like playing house or something. You know, they had an apartment and they had a kitchen. I didn't have one. So like. Um, I would feed him and his roommates sometimes and I burned a steak really badly in the oven one time. But the thing that I did that he remembers and makes his daughter now is a grandma pearl recipe. I made him grilled cheese and tomato soup and my grandmother makes it with instead of water, a can of skim milk and then she would do egg drop in it oh. to give it more protein. And I must have made that for peaches because two years ago he was like, I make my daughter your tomato egg drop soup and she loves it. And I was like, I made you soup? <laughs> like, I couldn't even remember. And he was like, yeah, and every time I make it for her, I, I think of you. And I was like, that's so cute That's and sweet, really sweet. But like, yeah, isn't it? Of all the things to remember from a person, like, you know, your college, like, boyfriends are not necessarily the most romantic people in your life, especially because everyone is broke and studying and wasted, you know? So like... It's not as if, I mean, it's not that I don't think we had romantic moments. It's just that they're all very fuzzy. So the fact that he could remember a recipe I made him and then this, and then, I mean, his daughter's only like eight. So remember this long after. Yeah. 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 It's really, it was cute. So like, that's one. I don't really know. Like when I hear the Grateful Dead, my first boyfriend in high school was a huge dead listener. I always think of him when it comes on. Because every time I talked to him on the phone, which was like three hours a night, every night for two or three years, in the background was, come here, Uncle, Uncle John's, John's band, band by the river playing it. Yeah, but it was other, I mean, he, it was, it was one mixtape, because we had those back then, that he would just play on repeat over and over and over and over and over. But you're asking me what people think of me. Yes. What is it about you that you feel that you think stuck with that? Like James Taylor, you've got a friend. That's what you remember about me? Really? What would you hope? What would I? Shit, I don't even know. Blowjobs, I guess. I hope that would stick with them. Wow. That's really all I've got to so give. This is the, you're the <laughs> same woman who last week said, I fade to black. I don't even want to see it. On TV shows, any, anything past a kiss. That doesn't mean I can't perform, damn it. You are so inconsistent. It's painful for my ears to hear this. I am an... Okay. Just because I don't want to watch others engage in sex does not mean I am not a highly sexual person myself. It just means I'm not comfortable watching you have sex. But behind closed doors, <laughs> I am an open book. Well, no, but behind closed doors, I'm an open book. Let's let's we'll do whatevs. I'm fine with that. But like, I just don't want to watch other people do it because it's gross, but it's not gross when I'm doing it. No, I mean, I thought it was a joke, first of uh -huh, all. But I like, gotcha. I mean, I would hope that would be memorable because if not, why did I give so many of them? But like, <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, is the title of this show. <laughs> Oh, damn it. <laughs> um. <laughs> you bitch. I can't do that because then I have to do a graphic that has you on your knees. And there's oh, good no point. way I'm no making that way. graphic. Don't do that. I don't think that was, little cartoon maker was meant for porn. Now I'm going to try to make porn from that graphic. You know I'm going to. Not to post, <laughs> just to share with you. I think. I think most people remember me as being funny and quick with the wit. Not just funny, but like funny before they would expect it. I mean, most people tell me like, 
oh my God, I totally remember you. You were hilarious. Or I remember you doing this thing on stage. Or I remember you were always cracking jokes. Or it was always something that no one else would do. Like some of my friends remember that I never got carded when I was getting beer. And some of them remember that I made fun of this person and it was hilarious. Or uh, or that I did something stupid, like forgot someone at a bar and drove home without them. And they had to walk home three miles or like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I mean, and also it depends on who you ask. I would hope it would be – honestly, it, I would hope it would be my sense of humor because I don't want to say that's the thing I work on the hardest, but I don't really work to impress people with my intellect or my generosity or my sweetness. And if anyone ever says I'm smart, fine, or sweet, I always look at them like, who, me? Who, me? Who? Because I don't think I'm that sweet. So – I would think they didn't know me that well. But if they said I was funny, I must have been comfortable enough around them to let it fly. So I have someone had I had someone answer. in my life who says when he sees Meg Ryan, he thinks of me. Right. That's ridiculous. I'm like, Meg Ryan, really? Because she has short, blonde, curly hair? Is that I mean, is it just hair that did it for you? So Oh, I see what you mean. I clearly we do not when share they a see face. Something, when they see something, they think of me. Like I don't have a – I don't know that I have a um, a signature like that. Like I didn't have a signature scent or a pair of jeans I wore every time or – I mean Birkenstocks maybe. Oh, really? I think people would – yeah. I wore one pair of Birkenstocks, dark green, for like seven years. Nobody who saw me between the ages of 16 and probably 23 didn't see me with those shoes on. But – but what? But you don't remember that. No, but a roommate of yours would. A roommate of yours would remember the smell of them, would remember that you just weren't you if you weren't wearing them. But that's a different person in your life. So Birkenstocks might be for roommates. You know, this thing is also something that you're not going to want it to be. For example, yeah. my roommate's parents used to have like a – um not like a snack delivery business. And so as a result, she always had cans and cans and cans and cans and cans of Frito-Lay cheese. And she was always eating cheese and nachos. But like, does she want to be known for that? Absolutely not. I think it's rarely something you want to be known for. Like, I don't I don't think it's something like I've worked really hard. To, like your sense of humor. I think everybody understands that's part of you. And it's one of the best parts of you. Oh, yeah, they're right. That was a terrible answer. You're right. Now, now that you say Meg Ryan, I'm like, shit. Yeah, I don't know. Right. It's something like uh, that James Taylor song. Please don't take that and use that. Oh, I, I do know one. The Doors. The movie The Doors, when that came out, it was a really big deal. My friends in high school and I quoted it constantly. And one of the ones, one of my friends was the one I was dating and he used to call me, what? Is that weird? No, I lost you, but I have a movie too. All right. So he used to call you what? And what were your quotes from The Doors? One of the guys I dated used to call me My Wild Love. My Wild Love went riding. She rode all the day. Yeah, there's that. Like, um. Also, Tombstone was that same kind of year. We also be like, I'm your Huckleberry. I'm your Huckleberry. We said that all the time. So movies I can probably do. Well, that's it. Vacation is one when I, when I was a kid, I used to watch with my friend Jenny Lord. We would always watch Vacation and she could do Christy Brinkley like it's exhilarating. Like she could always do like the Christy Brinkley pool lines. And so whenever I see that movie, I think of her. I don't know if she wants to be known for that or in excess. Because she was obsessed with an excess. I think the Indigo Girls. You know what? Here's my answer. The Indigo Girls. I think when people hear the Indigo Girls, other people, they think of me. Because I, I used to play it a lot in my car. I went to concerts with a lot of people. And camp, I had it going all the time. And people, I think, when they hear the Indigo Girls, think about me. I That's think, all I've got. But I think music plays that role in everybody's life. I think music will bring you back to a time. And if they hear Indigo Girls, they'll bring you back to a time where they were with you. And they were... Why Meg Ryan? What is their... I don't I mean, know. Is that because they think you look like her? I don't know. I, I don't see it at all. You do have like a short, curt demeanor like her. Like she's very quick and smart and funny and cute. There's that whole thing. It's not just the blonde hair. You kind of talk alike. I, I, I don't see it. I don't know Meg Ryan, so I don't get it. But I used to quote the Princess Bride like I was getting paid for it. So the Princess yeah. Bride is definitely. See, I think of my sister. You think of your sister with Princess Bride? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of movies that I only think of Dana because we would come home from school and watch HBO. So like Teen Witch, 
Better Off Dead. Yeah, Do you remember when HBO got a movie and then they played it all day, every day for the entire month? Yeah, we would wait for the first of the month. Women with the red shoes. The woman in red yes, shoes. Yes, the boy. How about one. the boy who could fly? Do you remember the boy who could oh, fly? Oh my God, Eric, what's his name? And that Lucy with the hair. Yes, of course. Yes, I loved that movie so much. I couldn't even explain well, to you I why. Was just- I was just going to say, I watch it every time I was on, but I'm wondering now if we didn't have a choice. We didn't have a choice. So the beginning of the choice. month, they would play a new movie at the, like, oh, yay, it's January 1st. So January 1st, they'd have a movie of the month and then it would be on and you'd turn on the TV and By- from any point, you'd have to pick it up. Oh, this is where he jumps off the roof or this is where they fly away together. Yep. Spoiler alert. <laughs> this- and it was annoying. You're right. Because like, because by the 20th, you were like this again. Jesus Christ. Right. But then it was like yeah. the 28th of the month. And you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm so close to a new movie. I just have to stick it out with HBO and get through it. And now you don't see but maybe once or twice a month no. a movie on any yeah, I know. cable channel. Definitely not those ones. Um, no, you're totally right. I love that movie. Uh, Witches of Eastwick, I feel like I watched on HBO. For 30 days. Uh, Yes, for 30 days you watched it, which is why we are so sick of all of these movies because it's not, oh, let me see this movie. It's, oh, let me see this movie twice a day for 30 days. Was never a movie you would have seen in a theater either. No, 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 no. Not if HBO got it. Never. Nobody ever went to go see The Boy Who Could Fly or Teen Witch in a theater. Do they even go out into a theater or are those direct to HBO? I'm saying I don't know. I don't know. I, I cannot imagine that they did. Right now, feeling nostalgic, I kind of want to see The Boy Who Could Fly. Like right now, I kind of want to see it. Too. You move in next Yesterday, door. Yesterday, I rented Arthur, the real Arthur, the 1981 Arthur. Yeah, it's a good one. Because I was just curious. My- and Scott was like, you just paid $5 for Arthur. And I was like, I don't remember much of it. I thought it'd be fun to watch it again. And you know what? He's an idiot. Yeah. He's a laughing moron. I hate it. Drunk. Drunk. He's drunk. That's why he's a laughing drunk moron. Drunk all the time, making jokes that aren't funny. Anyway, uh, my dad, because of the business he was in. Um, the video business. He would, re- he would, yeah, he was recycling videotape. So he would buy tape in bulk and then recycle it and then resell it. But sometimes he would get some fun shit. So like, for example, one time he came home with two full videotapes of commercials done by Ernest P. Worrell. Hi, Vern. Oh, my God. What? It was like three hours long of ver- of Ernest P. Worrell selling cars, ice cream. So it was like his sizzle insurance. reel? This is his sizzle reel that they now have on a... No, it was every commercial he ever did. Like, apparently he traveled the country shooting commercials for lo- Dryer's ice cream. Oh, my God. And, and yeah... And like Alabama Toyota. And so my sister and I would watch three hours. It wasn't a movie, but it was just like, hey, Vern, <laughs> I see what you're doing over there. Hey, Vern. And then he one time he brought home uh, Satisfaction with Justine Bateman. That which is I don't know if one of ever my seen. favorite movies. It wasn't always called. No, one of my f- they changed the name to Girls of Summer to play it late night. Yes, they changed the name. I remember seeing like Girls of Summer. This is probably porn. And I went by and I'm like, oh, my God, those are that's it was. um Julia Roberts, it was Justine Bateman, it yeah. was Liam, it was so good. It was so, 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 Liam so Neeson. good. Yeah, it was so, I loved they it. They changed it to Girls of Summer. That's what they played it on, on Channel 11 on Long Island. Hold on. I'm looking it up because... I was at oh, Delaware, no, I bought the soundtrack time. to Satisfaction, the DV, I'm sorry, the CD soundtrack because I love the music. <gasps> Holy shit, they changed the name of it. Well, when I got it, it was Satisfaction. Yeah, and that's the name of the soundtrack. I got a, yeah. Yeah, because I got a, oh, got a weird preview. Another one was um, A Night in the Life of Jimmy Reardon. Yeah, of course. Which was River Phoenix. Stop saying yeah. it like you don't think we had the same childhood and I saw the exact same. Where would you have gotten a copy of it that you could watch over and over and over? Like I thought, I was, when I was growing up, I was the only person that ever knew these movies, ever. Then it was on HBO, but late night HBO. Like it was either... It was either the movie of the month. We didn't go okay, out. Here's one you definitely didn't have. Go ahead. Bugsy Malone. Of course we saw Bugsy Malone. What? What? Why do you think that's just just you? I watched it. I don't. Oh, I didn't watch it a thousand in times. Maryland. Okay. I lived in Frederick, Maryland, and I would put these movies on. And my friends would be like, what the fuck is this? Like, no one had seen it. And I had it on VHS. So I thought it wasn't. Like never got made or I don't know. 
Bugsy Malone was Scott Bayo as like a 12 year old kid, right? Yeah, it was. I, I loved all those things. But now that you're bringing back Satisfaction, one of my faves. Um, yes. I love the music. Made me want to play cowbell. <laughs> I love the music, and there's one line in there from Satisfaction that I still use. Can you guess what line that is? It's so good. Is it Justine Bateman half crying about to leave? Um, wait. Um, no. Uh, no. It's a no. Who? Tell me who says it. Billy. Is this when she's in the shower and they're smacking her around from her overdose? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right. No. What is it? What's the word? What's the line? They get to the fancy party. When she starts putting all the Julia silverware Rob- in her pants and her, yeah. Yeah, and Julia Roberts goes, where's the dip? And she goes, all the dips are dancing. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite line to this day. When I go to a wedding, I go, look, all the dips are dancing. I really liked that movie. <laughs> I can't explain why. It's not so good. Not, I know. It's not it's a good movie, power. but I really liked it. No, but back then it was very girl power. You want to be in high school, drop out, not go to college. And and make it as a band. Start a band. And fall right. in love with Liam Neeson, who's at least 10 years older than you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's like every girl's dream. It's my dream. So, yeah. And you all, uh, and you had friends like I that. I can't believe it. You had a friend who would try anything. You had a friend who was, you had yeah. friends with all those personalities. Uptight, damaged. Daddy issues. Yeah, I did. Had the boyfriend who you didn't like, who came, who rocked the van for four days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, yes. It was terrible. Yes. And there's always a Doberman um, Pinscher in it somewhere. So, and they named him, ha- yes. his name was what? Hamlet. I think his name was Hamlet. What'd you say? Omelet? Yeah. Hamlet? Omelet? Omelet. <laughs> they called him Omelet because he was, because he was Irish, right? Omelet. His name's Omelet. Hamlet? Omelet. <laughs> I love Billy that was movie. my favorite part of that movie, even though she was half cocked the whole time. I feel like she we're was so funny. I feel like we're in that. What's that TV show where they talk about movies that are so obscure and ridiculous? Something two thousand. I have no yeah, idea. Well, guess what? We've hit it. This no is idea. what we're doing right now. You're going to New York next week. I am going to be in New York City. I am speaking, and I'm going to see a live recording of the podcast Little Known Facts which is another she podcaster um, interviewing Jesse Tyler Ferguson. That's pretty awesome. Next Sunday night. Yeah. So if you guys hear this on Thursday and you're in New York, all three of you, it's Sunday night at a, yeah, at the W Times Square. So that's where we stay when we go to New York. And I have to tell you, it is so fucking loud in that lobby because it's a club also. I I don't know how they're going to record anything there. It's in a space called the living room, which I don't know if that's a sex- separate place or what. I hope what. it is because it's so loud. I know. The bar is very loud. I'm actually staying a block away at the hotel. Well, should I say this? No. Just bleep it out, John. It's the hotel, which is right down the street. Yeah. So going there, I start signing. Every time it's too loud or if I have food in my mouth, I resort to using sign language to communicate. Sign language. But yeah. nobody with me understands sign language, but I need to get my point across and just can't stop talking. So... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I look for deaf people so I could at least enjoy something. Communication. So loud in that. So I'm going to see some. I'm going to see the guy from T Public there. I'm going to see my friend from podcast websites there. I'm going to see a bunch of podcasters actually here and there and everywhere. Um, So it's going to be really fun. You want to come? You don't have anything else to do, do you? (laughs) (laughs) That was so mean and thoughtful all at the same time i'm like come with me Melissa. your life is pointless and ridiculous right so i let Stuart pill one of the dogs the other night and i stayed at i went to hear a band play friday night friday saturday friday saturday mm-hmm. saturday night i went to hear friday night and i invited a friend of ethan's his older brother and his friend's mother who i really like because they're both, their two sons are musicians, and this is people who used to give my kids lessons on keyboard, lessons on guitar, dropped them both, and drum lessons. So we go to this restaurant bar, and we have dinner, a late dinner, and then we hang out to watch the band play. Um, I don't remember my point. <laughs> You want to you want to commit me now? Because I was telling you to come with me, and you were probably oh, going to explain right. so, why you're so needed in your dog's life. Right. So sorry. So I sent my husband home. That's where this is going. And my I'm kids were tired, and they went home. And Stuart's like, it's like like eleven o'clock, and he said, "I'm gonna 
pill the dog and go to bed. You pill the dog in the morning, pill the dog at night, and then as always my responsibility. So I like how pill someone is like beer me. Yes, exactly. You're pilling your dog. It's a noun made into a verb. So pill the dog. So he takes a scoop of peanut butter, rubs around the thing, tries to get into this dog hates him, is terrified of him, will not be in the same room as him. Um and he Why didn't he try cheese? What is he new? He's Yes, that's my point. He's new. So he opens his mouth. He puts it in and he holds his mouth closed. This dog that fucking hates him. He's now holding his mouth closed till he swallows this pill. Meanwhile, I go to the refrigerator. I take out this little can of meaty dog food. I take a scoop with a spoon. I push the pill into the middle. I hold the spoon down and he chows the whole thing right off the spoon. There's no torturing him, making him sit, shoving a pill in his mouth, peanut butter up to your elbows, like a hot mess. It's not torture. He's a dog. He's loved and cared for. Would you stop? Well, it's torture because he hates Stuart. So for Stuart to corner him and do this is like he's shitting his pants right there. So... Yeah, so I mean, it's uncomfortable, I'm sure. But it could have been so Tortured, easy. So sure. leaving him to do that, it was lovely. Was he branded and forced to have sex with your leader? Then no. <laughs> it's not a cult. <laughs> I think your house is a cult. It's a weird, brilliant cult. It's the cult of brilliance. Cult of personality. Um, I, I, I didn't know that Stuart was such a activity person. I don't know if I can be friends with him anymore. He can't sit still. Jesse cannot sit still. That's exhausting. What are we doing now? What are we doing now? What are we doing now? What are we going to do now? Uh, So I have a list of activities for Mother's Day. I'm like, slow the fuck down. On the one hand, I'm very jealous because my husband can't do any activities. And even when he could, I had to drag him to do them. But on the other hand, I'm exhausted just thinking about having to entertain my husband 24 hours a day. Well, I don't. I disengage. Two hours a day. And he works a lot. Two hours in there. I think I would love to entertain my husband. Aww. But, you know, the other 22 would be annoying. That's adorable. Aw, two hours. Hey. That's nice. Um, if I asked you well, wildly an far in advance um, for plans. Oh, you always give me a hard yes. time that I don't ask you. Hey, July 4th. Would you yes, like to let's do come it. with us for fireworks at our country club? Yes. That sounds so fun. Yes, I would. No, you don't want to go to Karen Friday's house? You should bleep that name out too, John. <laughs> um, you don't want to go to our friend's house for fireworks? Would, I guess not. Would you like to sit with a martini and a big golf course uh, while... Yes. Yeah, I mean... I just want to be with you. I would like to be with while you. While watching so a professional okay. display of fireworks. That sounds so fun. Yes. All right. Wait. What? Uh, uh, let me put it uh, on the calendar. So, yeah. It's the 4th of July. I July think they have 4th. a barbecue dinner. Oh, my God. Dinner. It's a Wednesday. What the frig? I hate when July 4th falls in the middle of the week. You just don't know what to take okay. off. Melissa's Country Club. I am there. You were, we are there. You were there for the B'nai Mitzvah also. It's where we'll sit out on the green. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. And we'll sit down. It's going to be really fun. What, uh, you're just t- closer to it. Just tell me what you need to bring. Also, if you'd like to have dinner anytime between now and then, you don't have to ask me this far in advance. Look, I'm just, just trying to deal with your criticism of you never, I never give you any notice. So I thought I'd give you significant notice. This Friday, we could probably do dinner if when it, I don't, you always have to check when Stuart's off, though. I know when Stuart gets off. <laughs> I hope you're there every time. Uh, but I hope I'm not well, there not every, every time. time. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, not every time. But I am there every Maybe time. Maybe there's some that could be left to the imagination, but. Oh, I forgot uh, to tell you, Stuart yeah, also you know. got me pajamas for Mother's Day. He also got me pajamas. That's a good gift. Always. I would take pajamas any day. It's always a good gift. I love. You know what? I went to a spa where they had these crazy micro. No, it wasn't a spa. It was like a bed and breakfast. And they had these really nice microfiber robes that actually fit around my giant stomach and like didn't. Like leave an opening for people to see, <laughs> like at the front. It's called the peekaboo. And uh, I went online to see what they were, and like you know, they're like a hundred bucks. I would love that. I love houseware, not housewares, houseware. Well, when you said my grandmother was wearing her house coat, that's what my nana called it too. Her house coat, house dress. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I've got, I've got my house coat on. I'm like, yeah, but you need night pants under. Like you, and she always had those cute. Yeah, sets. A house coat. Yeah, the house coat like a is like nightgown and then house and then like zip up nightgown on top of it. How did they stay warm? How did they stay warm? They were What did legs. they wear in the winter time? Oh. No legs, but no pants ever. Not pantyhose. Were they wearing pantyhose? That seems uncomfortable. My mother in law wears one of those, one of those zip up long long sleeve down to the floor. 
Oh, down to the floor. Frilly. Yeah, my grandmother's was always like at her knees. So I feel like it was just in the summer. I could be wrong. It's so cute. I miss those days. You know, you can still buy them. Google house dress. No. Or house coat. I will not. No, because once you Google it, they start showing you things. And I don't I don't need to feel oh, any true. older than I am. I don't want to start searching shit I'm like that. They're gonna start showing you denture cream. I too. don't need it. I don't <laughs> I already get I already get emails for like over sixty black singles. Like what? Where how did you get my what info? What did you Google? I don't know, but I'm I'm being very careful now at what I Google because I don't need the your decrepit things. You know, there's also a setting on your phone that you have to turn off so that it doesn't send marketing messages to your browser. Did you know that? Um somebody talked about that, but there were so many buttons to push I got lost in it. I didn't realize. There's also one that tells you if you what your political leanings are. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that one is either. All right. You should be good. What about the one that tells me if I'm a flaming liberal or let's be honest. I think that's it. They shouldn't be listening to you now. Ana- I don't know. That. Analytics? No. All right. Mm. I can go through this another time. No, you- Ooh, improve wheelchair mode. I have a wheelchair mode on my. <laughs> Are you in a wheelchair? I am not. Well, I am in a wheeled chair right now, but no, I am not in a wheel- I'm in a wheeled chair as well do you have a mat underneath your chair like a plastic mat so you could wheel around and you're on carpet i don't like those yeah i don't need it and you know what you probably shouldn't have it because you shouldn't be wheeling and on a microphone so john would probably yell at you now too it seems like yeah it would sound terrible but also my dad used to have that in his office and it used to drive me nuts i would trip on it and stub my you know then it would come up and they would be like pointed on the other side yes. and then i would step on it with my bare feet that's gonna, a nightmare. Hurt. That's gonna hurt i want that it's gonna leave yeah. a mark it needs that several marks yikes yowzers so did we just do um, a full recording without i think we did a full recording i think we're diggity done did we do it without john john we did it without john i think it went well are we gonna john you'll have to let us know what you are think. we gonna wrap it up flip um, it rub it down oh no Oh, no. Yes, we are going to do that right now. Thank you so much for listening to Brilliant Observations. You can find us at brilliantobservations.com. You can email us at brilliantobservations at gmail.com. Do it. And then you can find us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Listen Brilliant. Woo-hoo. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you like the show, please share it with a friend. Share it on your wall. Share it in Twitter. Share it in Facebook. Maybe even share it in LinkedIn if you're feeling sassy. Um, Melissa, thank you so much for your participation today. Thank you. That's the nutshell in a podcast. No, that's the pod <laughs> shell in a nutcast. Nutcast. Thanks, guys. I screwed that up. That's the pod shell in a nutcast. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.